Good morning. How's everybody doing this beautiful winter morning? Beautiful day out today. Good to see everybody this morning. Hey, if you're joining us online, it's good to see you as well. Welcome to Mosaic Church this morning. It's good to see you. If you're new, if you're visiting, if you've never filled out one of our welcome cards, they are in the seat pocket in front of you. We'd love for you to fill one of these out. And we have an offering box, which is right here on the wall, our offering box, right here on the wall as you exit. You know, if you wouldn't mind filling out a welcome card and dropping it in there, we would love to connect with you this morning. Let me read our mission statement for us as we begin our worship this morning. Mosaic Church is a Christian family committed to moving people from doubt and despair to faith and hope through a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's good to see you this morning. I have just a couple quick announcements before we begin our worship this morning. The first is our movie night this Friday at 6 p.m. Everyone's invited. We're going to be watching The Star. Raise your hand if you've seen that movie. It's a good one for all ages. It's a, it's a cartoon uh, Christmas movie uh, about the birth story of Jesus. It's a great, uh, it's a great movie. So come on out uh, this Friday at 6 p.m. for our family movie night. Everybody is invited. And then Angel Tree, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for all of you who have already brought gifts. We have tons of gifts out there. That's so exciting. But we also have a, just a few more angels on there. So if you did not yet get uh, an angel or if you want to grab another one, you are welcome to do so. Uh, we'd love to have the rest of the presents here by next Sunday. Uh, if possible. So just a few more angels on there if anyone still needs to grab one or an extra one. And we'd love to have the angel tree presence here uh, by next Sunday if possible. So thank you, thank you, thank you for blessing all of these many children this Christmas. Well, I'm going to call Richard up here for a very exciting announcement about a new uh, program happening. Good morning. Hello, is this on? There you go. Okay. Uh, a couple of months ago, the church took me on board as the a director of discipleship ministries. And uh, I'm excited about that, but uh, also have a little fear and trembling at the same time, which is good. It's never good to be overconfident when the Lord's called you to something. One of the things that Jesus told his disciples is to go into all the world and make disciples. And the church, I'm not just talking about Mosaic, I'm talking about the church at large, especially in the United States, has not done a very good job at doing that. So, as a person who is keying into discipleship, I'm inviting all of you to come and be a part of a move to change that picture, to become a disciple of Christ. Now, I've got, the I've got these cards right here that are in the twirl around thing, and I'd like to invite you to take one with you. Um, the program is scheduled to begin and will be on Wednesday. We'll have two sessions, uh, same material in both sessions, and that was to help meet people's schedules. It would be a, a 10 o'clock till noon in the morning and a 5.30 to 7.30 time slot in the evening. And we'll be covering the same material in both sessions, and it'll be for a total of 12 weeks. So we're looking for a 12-week initial commitment. So I invite you to come and be a part of that, I pray that it's going to be a new move of the Holy Spirit here at Mosaic, but not just for us here, but throughout the valley in Florence as well. Um, I've already talked to the, the adult class about it this morning, and um, so I'm excited, and I'm inviting all of you. And I'm opening this up to anyone age 14 years of age on up, because I look at this to be an intergenerational thing. So if you, you know, don't stay away because you're, you feel you're too young. Uh, everybody who wants to follow Christ needs to be a disciple. Thank you. 
Oh, and if you have any questions, you can see me afterwards. I'll be at the door with some of these, too. Let's stand together. And uh, let's sing Go Tell It on the Mountain. Go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Sing it again. Go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is Born. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, Fill us with the light of day. Go tell it on the mountains, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, as Jesus Christ is born. All thy works with joy surround the earth, and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around the center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadows, flashing seas. Chanting bird and flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in thee. It's Christmas, the angels are singing, and I know the reason, the Savior is born. It's Christmas, the bells are ringing, and I feel like shouting, joy to the world. coming to share the Advent reading with us. The word of the Lord. See, God has come to save me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. The Lord God is my strength and my song. 
He has given me victory. With joy you will drink deeply from the fountain of salvation. In that wonderful day you will sing, Thank the Lord. Praise his name. Tell the nations what he has done. Let them know how mighty he is. Sing to the Lord, for he has done wonderful things. Make known his praises around the world. Let all the people of Jerusalem shout his praise with joy. For great is the Holy One who, of Israel who lives among you. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Pastor D and Debbie. Now let's sing How Great Our Joy. You can remain seated for now. Their 
hundred times for me. Bringing out gifts for the newborn Savior, all that we have, whether costly or meek, because we believe. Gold for his honor and frankincense for his pleasure and myrrh for the cross. He'll suffer, do you believe? This we waited for. And how many kings stepped down from their thrones? How many lords have abandoned their homes? How many greats have become the least? And how many lungs have poured out their hearts to romance a world that is torn all apart? How many fathers gave up their sons for me? Only one did that for me. Let's pray together this morning. Father, we bow before you this morning, God, and we recognize that your name is above all names, and it's only by your name, God, that we experience true fulfillment in our lives, God. As we talk about joy today, remind us that true joy only comes from you. We can't find it anywhere else. There's things that make us happy. There's things that make us content. There's things that are exciting, but true joy that goes deep within our soul is only found through you, Jesus. So let us remember that today, God. Let us celebrate that and remind us today, God, remind us today, Lord, that we need to be seeking your joy every single day, that you have it available for us, but we need to seek it and be filled by it. Thank you, God, for being the source of joy for us and filling us with this, just this deep satisfaction and joy, Lord, that we have as we worship your name and abide in you every single day. We pray for those in our church this morning, God, who are sick, who are hurting, who are dealing with different things today. God, be with them. Heal them, God. Restore them. And Father, whatever it is that we're going through this morning, we're in this room today. We're all dealing with many different things, many different emotions right now during this holiday season, God. You know what they are, God. You know what our prayer requests are. You know what we need, Lord. May we reach out to you, God, and say, Lord, here I am. I need you, God. As we bow before you this morning, Father. Lord, prepare our hearts for communion today, God. We, we confess of our sins and our mistakes and our failures this week, God. We repent of those things, those attitudes, those behaviors, those things that we did, God, that we regret. And Father, we come back to you this morning, Lord, with an open heart, God, with open arms. Prepare our hearts for communion, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.
please raise your hand if you need a cup still, communion cup. Okay, one in the back there. Over here. And one right over here. Thank you. And I think we have one in the back. God's word reminds us on the night in which Jesus was betrayed. Jesus took the bread. He gave it to his disciples. He broke it and said, Take and eat, for this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me, the body of Christ broken for us. Then Jesus took a cup. He gave thanks and he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me, the blood of Christ poured out for us. Father, we are forever grateful for the one true sacrifice of Jesus to Pay the price for the sins of the world and to forgive us, God, within our lives today. Father, by your Spirit, make us one with Christ. Make us one with each other. Make us one in the ministry of Christ to all the world until Christ comes in final victory, we pray. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. It's always enjoyable to have Mosaic Kids in the service with us. Right now it's their time to go to the Mosaic Kids Church with Pastor Val. Did you ever wonder why God let his son be born in a manger? Probably because Christ's birth and that hay symbolized many things about his later life and ministry like sacrifice. It was fitting that the Lamb of God should be born surrounded by animals, or meaning accessibility. Shepherds hurrying to the stable did not have to flash ID identification cards to get by the guards. Wise men didn't have to write for an interview or have their credentials cleared by some secret service agent. And the manger demonstrated his poverty. Though he was the creator of everything and could have had a pompous birth, he was born in a stable. He borrowed a stable in which to be born. And later he said he had no bed of his own. And he borrowed a basket that bright morning before he sent the people away fed full. He borrowed a boat from which to preach his father's love to the man, to the men who stood that day on Galilee's beach wanting to hear his message again. And he borrowed a donkey on which to ride into Jerusalem. He borrowed a room in which to meet his friends and have the Last Supper together. He borrowed a table on which to eat. And the towel he used to dry his disciples' feet was not his own either. He borrowed a cross on which to die. And he borrowed a tomb in which to lie. Yet the whole great universe was his very own. And now he's looking for a life to share, an open heart in which he can move and call his own. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. Well, it's good to see you this morning, especially those of you new or visiting this morning. I just want to welcome you here. So glad that you're here with us today at Mosaic. It's just so great to have you as part of our church family. I was just thinking about it this morning. Can you believe less than 24 hours ago that this sanctuary was a tea party? And how many of you were here for the ladies' tea yesterday? What a great time. How many of you volunteered yesterday? I know many of you ladies volunteered too. Thank you, thank you, thank you to all of the volunteers who made it happen. It was just so much fun, wasn't it? And it's crazy how quickly, you know, this room was now turned back into a sanctuary. It's just incredible if you were here yesterday uh, to see that transformation. But many people worked very hard. And so thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, I was, I was having a good time yesterday, even though I was carrying chairs and, you know, all of that fun stuff. I, and I thought, why am I having such a good time when, when I was working so hard? I mean, I don't like tea parties personally, but I was having... I was having such a good time, you know, and I was thinking, well, I was, you know, serving, serving others and fellowshipping with others. And, you know, these things bring me joy. You know, we're talking about joy today. And I know that many of you uh, who are serving, I could tell you, were also having a good time. We were having a fun time in the kitchen and, and all that. Uh, we won't go into too many details. But anyway, um, I was just thinking this morning, the joy that we get as we serve the Lord. You know, it's like, why would, the, why would it be fun to be doing this physical labor and, and doing all this stuff? But it's fun as we serve the Lord. God fills us with a joy as we serve Him. And that's the kind of joy that we're going to talk about today. I want to try and uh, have us pretend that we were part of God's people back in the day, back before Jesus was born. Try to imagine, try to imagine uh, that you were there before Jesus was born, and, and you finally heard the good news that Jesus, the Messiah, had come. He was born. Try to imagine the joy that God's people felt as they heard that good news that finally Jesus, the Messiah, was here. You know, they were awaiting this promised Messiah for hundreds and hundreds of years. Just try to put yourselves in their shoes this morning and Feel the joy that they felt as Jesus the Messiah was born. See, it's easy for us to lose perspective because, you know, many of us have grown up in church. We've been raised celebrating the birth of Jesus year after year after year. It kind of becomes second nature. And we kind of become disconnected with the joy, that original joy that God's people felt, that excitement that God's people felt. Finally, God has answered his promise. He is faithful, and here is the promised Messiah, born in a manger. And I believe that uh, for some of us, celebrating Christmas has become so routine. Celebrating the birth of Jesus has become so routine that we lose the joy, we lose the excitement, we lose the enthusiasm. So try to bring yourself back this morning of what it must have felt like to be part of God's people back then. Your people have waited hundreds of years for this promised Messiah to come, but then you heard the good news that here's the Messiah. He has been born. What a great day. How exciting that must have been. And the big truth that we're going to talk about today is that Jesus brings us a joy. Jesus brings us a joy that is so impactful, that's so real, that goes so deep within our soul that we cannot find it anywhere else. That's the big truth that we're going to talk about today. And we talked about a similar theme with hope and with peace, that Jesus gives us this hope and this peace that is so unique, that is so exceptional, that we can't find anywhere else. And the same is true with joy. God gives us a joy that is both unexplainable and something that we cannot find anywhere else. And we want to be reminded of that truth this morning. Uh, one of the most, uh, I think one of the most prevalent subjects in the Bible is this concept of joy. I can't remember how many times it's mentioned in the Bible, but it's a lot. It's one of the most common subjects in God's Word, this idea of rejoicing, this idea of, of being filled with God's joy. It's all over Scripture and in many instances, it's written to us kind of like a command, like this is something that we should be pursuing. 
We should be pursuing God's joy. God is the source of joy, and God wants us to live in joy. Therefore, as Christians, we should be daily pursuing God's joy. Let's open up to the book of Psalms, and if you've ever read through Psalms, you know that there's so much in there talking about joy. There's so much in there that has to do with joy. Let's look at Psalm 16 this morning. We're going to read Psalm 16, verses 8 through 11 this morning. Take a look at those. And this concept of rejoicing is written all throughout the book of Psalms. Here's what Psalm 16 says, verses 8 through 11. We can take these words to heart this morning. I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken, for He is right beside me. No wonder my heart is glad, and I rejoice. My body rests in safety. For you will not leave my soul among the dead, or allow your Holy One to rot in the grave. You will show me the way of life, granting me the joy of your presence and the pleasures of living with you forever. And many of us today, we can connect with this. We can relate with this passage. Here we find the psalmist rejoicing because God has protected him. God has saved him. God is there with him. He rejoices knowing that God has given him the path to life. God has given him the path to truth and that God has given him eternal life everlasting. And this is a kind of joy that we cannot find anywhere else. We can trust in Jesus. We know that he's with us. We know that he will guide us. We know that he's given us a great inheritance. And knowing these things produces a joy within us that is so unexplainable and that cannot ever be taken away. And here's the truth. When we abide in and live in the presence of God, we experience a joy that cannot be found anywhere else. Verse 11 here talks about the joy of living in God's presence. The pleasures that it brings us as we live with God today and forever. You know, God's blessed us with a lot of things, hasn't he? And I think many of us can write a list out of all the things that God has blessed us with. And those things bring us happiness, right? Those things bring us good feelings. But they're different than the joy that God himself brings us. Because we can have none of those things. We can have none of God's blessings. But as long as we have God, as long as we have a relationship with God, as long as we have God's word and we're abiding in Christ, we experience a joy that goes deep within our souls. It's a joy that's different than maybe opening up a Christmas present under the tree when you're a kid, if you remember those days. You know, you, you get a Christmas present that you've been waiting forever for, and it just it brings you that feeling of happiness and excitement. But the joy of living in God's presence is a joy that is so unique, is so exceptional, is so different than any sort of feeling of happiness or pleasure that we can find anywhere else. You know, it's interesting because many times when we think of God's blessings and when we think of the concepts of joy or happiness, we think of material possessions. You know, we, th we thank God for blessing us with certain material possessions. Like we say, thank you, God, for my home. Thank you, God, for this food. Thank you, God, that we can go on this great vacation. And we thank God for things, and it's totally fine and totally right for us to thank God for many of these blessings He's given us. But I think the Psalms point out here, and I think what God's Word points towards is the joy that we find in God's presence has nothing to do with material possessions. The joy that we find in God's presence is totally different than some of the material blessings that God gives us. We can find a joy in God's presence that goes deep within our soul, even on the worst of days, even when everything's taken away from us, even if we have nothing, we still can find that joy in God's presence. And it's based on knowing the truth about God, that He is with us, that He has saved us, that He's given us eternal life. And it's a joy that we cannot find anywhere else. It's a deep pleasure within our soul that we cannot find anywhere else. 
And, and you know, we, we get it as we worship God here in church. We get it as we serve, like at the tea party or a different area of ministry. We receive this joy as we give financially, as we uh, read God's word. Uh, we receive this joy that God gives us that we cannot find anywhere else. And I believe God calls us to continually pursue that joy. You know, God doesn't want us to be grumpy Christians that are just feel like we're indebted to Him, and so we have to work and slave away for Him. God wants us to be joyful Christians who, who just are longing to receive more and more and more of God's joy as we worship Him, as we serve Him, as we abide in Christ. That is the right perspective. You know, we're thankful for all of the blessings God has given us. I know many of us in this room, God has blessed us so abundantly. But the real blessing, the real source of joy is God Himself. It's God Himself. And more specifically, as we live in, as we abide in the presence of God, we experience this deep delight and joy within us. And Psalms 4 describes this perfectly. If you look at Psalms 4, Verses 7 and 8, God's Word describes this concept perfectly. Here's what the Bible says. You have given me greater joy than those who have abundant harvests of grain and new wine. Verse 8. In peace I will lie down and sleep, for you alone, O Lord, will keep me safe. Well, going back to verse 7, what does the Bible say here? The Bible says here, God, you have given me greater joy than those who have abundant harvests of grain and new wine. Now, what does that mean? Basically, what the Bible is saying here is that you can have anything and everything. There is somebody that could have anything and everything. And we might want what they have, but here's the truth. God has given us, we have access to, God has given the psalmist here even greater joy than those who have every material possession you could possibly have or want. And culturally back then, having an abundant harvest of grain and new wine was the equivalent of being very wealthy and having everything you could ever want. What does the Bible say? You have given me greater joy than that. That means that the joy that God gives us is not based on the stuff that we have. It's a joy that goes so deep within our soul. It's a pleasure that goes so deep within our soul. And that is the kind of joy that God gives us, and we celebrate that joy as we celebrate the birth of Jesus today. This is a joy that comes from God alone. This is a joy that comes from, the, from living in God's presence and abiding in Christ. You know, I have very specific and vivid memories. I have memories of times when I've been having a bad day. But as I open up God's Word, as I come to the Lord in prayer, I receive a joy within me, despite the bad day I'm having. You ever experienced that before? It's weird, isn't it? You're having a bad day. Circumstances are not going okay. Maybe just a few minutes ago, you were not doing okay at all emotionally. But you open up God's Word, or you come to the Lord in prayer, and you just feel this infusion of joy deep within you. That's the kind of joy that God gives us. It's not based on how your day is going. It's not based on circumstances. It's not based on the material blessings that you have. It's the joy of living in the presence of God Himself. And that is the joy that we need to be pursuing as Christians. Sometimes we spend too much time and energy pursuing, you know, material things or whatever when we should be pursuing the source of joy, which is God Himself. What greater thing should we ever be pursuing? And I believe, the, I believe the more we pursue God, the more joy He fills us with. And so naturally, that is where we should be uh, aiming our pursuits, living in God's Word, living in prayer, and just being so blessed by the joy that God fills us with as we serve God, as, as, we, as we give to the Lord, as we sacrifice for God, as we worship God, as we pray, as we read God's Word, the joy that He gives us as we do those things. It's a unique joy. We cannot find it anywhere else. You know, I've had days where I walk outside in the summer, and it's another 115-degree day. 
And you know what it's like towards the end of summer. It's just so depressing, you know? And it's the same thing in the winter. For those of you, maybe you live elsewhere in the in the winter or, or you have in the past. Uh, you know what it's like in the winter when it's supposed to be spring and it's just freezing cold. And it's just, it feels so depressing. It's like, how could I, how could I ever be happy on a day like today? But you know, I've had those times on those days, and I've opened up God's Word. I've bowed before the Lord in prayer, and I've experienced just a, a, a joy within me. It's not based on how the day is going. It's not based on how the weather is. It's a, it's a joy that goes beyond that. It's a joy that goes deep within my soul as I'm living in God's presence, soaking in God's Word, and the joy fills me up. You know, it's not a joy. The joy that God gives us is not a joy that's based on outward circumstances. It's a joy that we can receive, that we can experience anytime, anywhere, any place, in any circumstance. We know that God has forgiven us. We know that God has given us new life. We know that God is walking with us, and it just fills us up as we live in God's presence. We're going to open up to 1 Peter chapter 1. And I think 1 Peter chapter 1 describes this concept very well. We're actually going to start in verse 6. We're going, to read, we're going to read just verses 6 and 7. Here's what God's Word says. So be truly glad. Be truly glad. There is wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure trials for a little while. Some of you need to hear this this morning. Verse 7. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. Go back to verse 6. You know, I know some of you have gone through some trials lately. But what does the Bible say here? Be truly glad. There is wonderful joy ahead. Hang on to that joy. There's trials that we endure as we live life, but the joy that God gives us supersedes those trials. Let's fast forward to verse 8. Verses 8 and 9, God's Word says this, You love Him, even though you've never seen Him, and though you do not see Him now, you trust Him, and you rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy. Verse 9, The reward for trusting Him will be the salvation of your souls. Now, verse 8 tells us, we rejoice through the good times and the bad times. God has given us a joy that is both glorious and inexpressible. You know, it, it's both from God, it's glorious, and it's also a joy that we cannot put words to. You ever experience that joy in your life? That is the joy that God gives us, and we need to be pursuing that joy. And it's based on, it comes from the root of it is Jesus, the salvation of our souls, the, the ministry and work of Jesus, and the truth, the faith that we have in Jesus. That's what it's based on. We know that He's saved us. We know that He's redeemed us. We know that He's forgiven us. We know that He's wiped us clean. We know that He walks with us. We know that He's there for us. And the faith that we have in Jesus is what springs up that joy within our lives. Even when we're having a bad day, we can shift our focus to the faith that we have in Jesus, to the way in which God has blessed us. And we can receive that joy, that glorious and inexpressible joy. You know, I think the book of Matthew chapter 13, verse 44, describes this joy so well that we have in Jesus. And this is a teaching that, that Jesus gave in Matthew chapter 13, verse 44. Um, this is when Jesus is describing what the kingdom of God is like. And here's what he says in verse 44. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that a man discovered hidden in a field. So he he finds this treasure, it's hidden in a field, in his excitement. He hid it again, and he sold everything he owned to get enough money, and he bought the field.
we see someone find Jesus. We see someone find Jesus, and this is the point of this passage. We see someone find Jesus, and in his excitement, this could also be translated as joy, in his joy, he hit it again, and, and, and just out of that, that passion, that excitement, that joy that God has given him, he sold everything. He bought the field. And, 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 and the Bible is saying here that the kingdom of God is, is, is like that. It's like this treasure that we've discovered. Jesus, God, the kingdom of God is like this treasure that we've discovered. And we've sold everything. We've given up everything. We've disregarded everything. And out of our excitement, out of our joy, we've done everything we could possibly do to buy it, to pursue it. That's what God is like. It's a treasure that we found. And it brings us joy. And we give up anything for it. I think that's a good description of the joy that God gives us. This man here, he sells everything in an attempt to get it. Out of a spirit of joy, out of a spirit of excitement, he gives up every single thing he had in order to receive Jesus. And the point here is that the gift of Jesus is so much more valuable than all of our possessions combined. Sell everything just to get that field so you can receive that treasure. That's the joy that we have. You know, the word joy in the Bible comes from the Greek word kara. It kind of looks like chara, C-H-A-R-A in English letters. And it's, uh, the definition of it is a deep internal delight. That's what the biblical word joy means, a deep internal delight. And it's different than happiness, right? Happiness is different. Happiness is an emotion. It's an emotion that's usually based on external circumstances, right? You feel happy if the weather's nice. You feel happy if you get a pay raise at work. You know, you feel happy if someone says something nice to you, whatever. But Christian joy is different. Christian joy is a good feeling deep within the soul produced by the Holy Spirit as he causes us to see the beauty of Christ in the Bible and the world. Christian joy is a good feeling deep within your soul. It's produced by the Holy Spirit as he causes us to see the beauty of Christ in God's Word and in the world. Christian joy isn't something that we can just bring upon ourselves. It's given to us by God. It comes from God. And Christian joy doesn't come from good circumstances. It comes from God. So you kind of see how happiness is so different than this idea of Christian joy. Because many times we, we take the word joy, we take the word happiness, and we kind of connect them as one idea. But happiness is different. Happiness is very much based on how our day is going, how our circumstances are doing that day. Whereas joy, Christian joy, comes from God. It comes from God, and it's based on on God's Word, and it's given to us by the Holy Spirit. And here's the truth. We all have access to this joy. We all have access to this joy every single day. As we open up God's Word, as we abide in Christ, as we get on our knees and pray before God, we have access to this very real joy. And it's a joy that we can receive even on our worst of days. You can be having a terrible day and still be filled with God's joy. And that is the gift that Jesus has given us. How do we receive this joy? By dwelling in God's presence, by reading God's word, by worshiping God, by serving the Lord, by giving to him, by studying God's word, by praying, by fellowshipping. This is how we receive God's joy. And I believe that the call of God's word, when it comes to joy, I believe that the call, what God is calling us to, is to be pursuing that joy. God wants you to be filled with his joy. God wants you to be filled with his joy. The enemy wants you to be distracted, right? The enemy wants you to be distracted and focused on material possessions. God wants you to be focused on pursuing him and pursuing that unique, exceptional, life-changing joy that only comes from him, that only comes from a committed life of prayer that only comes from abiding in Christ, that only comes from soaking in God's Word every single day. Maybe you know the joy I'm talking about. 
that comes from serving or volunteering in church, that comes as we give towards the towards missions, give give towards the ministry of the church, the joy that we receive as we do that. And I think the further we get along in our Christian walk, we realize that this is the only thing that truly satisfies us. Material possessions aren't going to satisfy us like the eternal joy that God gives us as we rest in the knowledge that He has saved us, He has forgiven us, He has given us a great calling, and He has given us eternal life. Let's pursue that joy this week. Let's pray. Father, we bow before You this morning, God. And we pray, God, that you would lead us to pursue this joy that you've called us to, God. Forgive us for the times when we're so focused on ourselves, when we're so focused on material possessions, God, when we have this infinite, eternal joy that you want to fill us with every single day as we pray to you, as we open up your word, God, as we get involved in church, Lord, as we get involved in in your kingdom, God. You want to fill us up with your joy. And then you want that joy to overflow unto others. Teach us about this joy, Holy Spirit, we pray. May we apply these passages to our lives, God. And may we not be grumpy Christians, God. Help us be joyful Christians, overflowing with your joy this week. A contagious joy that spills onto others, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand together and sing joy to the world into unspeakable joy. Let's stand together. Oh, 
Amen. Please remain standing for our benediction, then we'll be dismissed this morning. God of joy and exaltation, you strengthen what is weak, you enrich the poor, and give us hope to those who live in fear. Look upon our needs this day. Make us grateful for the good news of salvation, and keep us faithful in your service until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives forever and ever. We go in God's joy this morning. Amen.